when investing and paying your taxes in Ireland, there are three main tax forms that you're probably gonna to need to be aware of when filing them. The CG1 form, Form 12, and Form 11. In this video, we're gonna be running through exactly how to file your CG1 form, but we'll also be releasing videos on both the Form 12 and the Form 11 in the coming weeks. We've done our best to ensure that all the info in this video is up to date as per the date of recording, but of course, Revenue may change or update their website over the coming months and years, so by the time you watch this, things may have changed, so do make sure to check out the video description and the comments below, which is where we'll leave any updates that do come about. Okay, on with the video. Depending on which category you fall into from a tax standpoint, you'll likely need to file one or two of the three forms that we mentioned earlier. At a high level, the main distinctions are as follows. First, we have the CG1 form. The CG1 form is for PAYE earners, i.e. people who have a job, who wish to declare any capital gains or losses that they've generated during the year. Generally speaking, this is from the sale of stocks or crypto and is charged at a capital gain tax rate of 33%. If you want a detailed breakdown of capital gains tax in Ireland, make sure to watch our video that we've done on that and you can check it out here. If you have other forms of income to declare in addition to your capital gains, for example, dividend payments, staking rewards from cryptocurrency, payments from a side hustle or from renting your room on Airbnb, you'll likely also need to file what is called a Form 12. The Form 12 is for PAYE earners who also have up to 5,000 euro in non-PAYE additional income. These non-PAYE forms of income could be anything from dividend payments, renting your room on Airbnb, side hustles, etc. To reiterate, the important distinction between a CG1 form and a Form 12 is that a CG1 form is to declare capital gains or losses only. The Form 12, however, is to declare non-PAYE sources of income in addition to your regular PAYE income. Of course, for someone new to invest in taxes, the distinction between capital gains and income can be a little bit confusing because at the end of the day, it's all money in your pocket, but it is important to understand, especially from a tax standpoint. Let's take an example. If you hold Apple stock and the value of your Apple stock increases by 2,000 euro, this will be charged at a capital gains tax rate of 33% in Ireland. To declare this gain on your annual tax return, you will need to file a CG1 form. However, as Apple also pays a dividend, any dividend income you receive from holding shares in Apple won't be charged at capital gains tax rates, they'll be charged as income, and thus you will also need to file a Form 12 to declare this income. If you're someone who falls into this Form 12 category, you'll have two options. You can e-file your Form 12 through your My Revenue account on revenue.ie. So Revenue actually don't make it very clear where exactly you need to file a Form 12. So what you need to do is log into My Account and come down to review your tax 2017 to 2020, or whatever year is applicable to you when you're doing this. And then on the next screen, you should be able to see both your statement of liability for the tax year in question, and below that, your income tax return section. If the income tax return section isn't visible to you, we suggest sending revenue a message through my inquiries and asking them to activate it and or to mention that you want to file a Form 12 and how to go about doing so. And they should be able to guide you through the process. If this view is available to you, all you need to do is then simply click amend and follow through with the process. We'll be doing a full video on how to fill out a Form 12 in the coming weeks, so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. Alternatively, you can fill in a paper version of the Form 12 and either mail it directly to Revenue or upload it via my inquiries. Technically speaking, Revenue do say that you need to mail these forms directly to them, but in our experience, some people have been able to scan and upload the form to my inquiries, so I think it might depend on what Revenue officer you get on the day, so it's worth a shot if you want. One other important thing to remember is that according to Revenue, if you e-file the Form 12, there is not a capital gain section on that form, so you will also need to file a CG1 form. However, on the paper version, there is a capital gains tax section, so if you do the paper version, you shouldn't need to also do a CG1 form. Why they do this? I have no idea. And then lastly, we have Form 11. We'll save most of this for another video, but just to give you a brief overview of what the Form 11 is for. The Form 11 is for people whom revenue refer to as chargeable individuals. You'll need to file a Form 11 form if you are a self-employed individual or a PAYE earner with more than 5,000 euro annually in non-PAYE income. So a quick example, say you have a full-time PAYE job, but on the side you also sell t-shirts on Amazon. 
Selling these t-shirts on Amazon generates you an extra 10,000 euro in income annually, and thus you will need to file a Form 11 at the end of the year to declare this income. The Form 11 is quite an extensive form, so it includes everything from income, capital gains tax declarations, etc. So you'll only need to file one form to declare all your income and capital gains. In order to file a Form 11, you will need to register as a chargeable individual through revenue.ie. You can do this by logging into your My Revenue account, coming up to ROS or ROS and following the steps to register. Once you receive your activation email and your digital certificate for ROS, you'll then be able to log in and file a Form 11. We'll show you exactly how to do this in a future video, so stay tuned. Okay, so how exactly do you file a CG1 form? Before we dive into the step-by-step -step process, let's take a quick example to illustrate throughout. And just to state the obvious, we've made up these numbers just for the simplicity and sake of the example. Let's use two tax years. 2019 and 2020. In 2019, let's say we invested 1,000 euro in Silly Company Limited based on a tip from a friend. By October of that year, our investment has decreased in value by 50%. We realize investing based on tips isn't always the best idea, so you decide to sell your shares in Silly Company Limited and start fresh. You sell your shares for a loss of 500 euro. You don't make any other sales for the rest of the year, and at the end of 2019, you have a net loss of 500 euro. It's really important to remember that in Ireland, you can carry forward your losses, so you need to file a return even if you don't make any money, because if you don't file those losses, you won't be able to write them off against future gains. The good thing is that the losses can be carried forward indefinitely until you use them. A very quick note on ETFs, however, with ETFs, if you make a loss on an ETF investment, you unfortunately cannot offset those losses in future years. You can only offset losses on individual stocks, shares, cryptocurrency. Okay, back to the example. So it's now 2020. In January of 2020, you invest 1,000 euro in Bitcoin. In February, you invest 1,000 euro in Apple. And then by October of 2020, the value of Bitcoin has quadrupled and your Bitcoin is now worth 5,000 euro. Your Apple shares, however, are not looking so good. Tim Cook has gone missing and Apple share price has dropped in half and is now worth 500 euro. In November of 2020, you decide investing isn't for you and you decide to sell both your Bitcoin holdings and Apple shares. You don't make any other sales in 2020. So let's do a quick calculation based on the example of what we currently owe. So in 2019, we had our 500 euro loss, which we've carried forward to 2020. So far in 2020, we've had a 4,000 euro profit in Bitcoin and a 500 euro loss in Apple. However, we first need to subtract our losses from the previous year in our calculation. So in this scenario, we will deduct the 500 euro loss from our investment in Silly Company Limited, and then minus our current year losses from the 500 euro loss in Apple shares. This gives us a total of 3,000 euro. We then of course also have our 1,270 euro annual tax exemption to use. So once we subtract this from 3,000 euro, our net chargeable gain is 1,730 euro. This figure is chargeable at the 33% capital gains tax rate, which gives us a total of 570 euro and 90 cent. Okay, so we'll use these figures as our example figures as we fill in our CG1 form. Remember, you pay your taxes in the year that you dispose of your assets and then you file the following year. If you sell between January 1st and November 30th, you must pay your tax bill by December 15th of that year. The only exception is if you sell between December 1st and December 31st, where in that scenario, you have until January 31st of the new year to pay. You would then file your CG1 return before October 31st of the new year. So to keep this example moving, let's just pretend that we've already filed our return for the 500 euro loss that we made in our investment in Silly Company Limited. It's now 2021 and we wanna file a CG1 form for the tax year of 2020. Let's dive in. So first and foremost, to state the obvious, we're recording this video in 2021, so the form available to us is 2020, but this of course might be different to you when you watch this video. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is add your tax reference number, which is simply your PPS number, and you can fill that in here. Then add in your name and address, and you can move on forward. So the first note you'll see here is that if you complete and submit this return on or before 31st of August, Revenue will calculate the self-assessment for you. What they're referring to is this section at the very end of the document, part 23. So again, if you fill it in by this date, you can simply st skip this last section. But again, it's not a very long section, so it's up to you. 
Then there's also a flag here that if you are delayed in your filing of your CG1 form, there's a surcharge where it's 5% within two months or otherwise 10% thereafter. So again, keep that in mind. There's then a section here on your local property tax. For the sake of this example, it's not really relevant, so we're gonna skip through it. And unless you have some issues with local property tax, it's not gonna be relevant to you, so you can skip on by. For this section here, you simply just need to sign and date the document. Um, capacity of signatory is just yourself. You can add in your main residence address, and that's pretty much it for that section. For contact details here, you can leave this blank. This would only be in the case that you had a tax professional filling in the document on your behalf. So this section here, you can just skip on by. Okay, so let's get into the form. Again, add your PPS number up here, and then let's skip down to section one. So here in section 1A, we put in the total value of our sales in the tax year. So to refer to our previous example, this would be 5,000 euro worth of Bitcoin plus 500 euro worth of Apple shares. Note, this is just the total amount you received from selling and is not specific to either the profits or losses. So just keep that in mind. So for us, we'll simply add 5,500 euro into this aggregate consideration section in 1A. From part B to K, you can simply ignore and skip on by. And then again, for I in total consideration, you can add in the same figure. So for us, it's gonna be 5,500 euro. For section two to six, you can pretty much skip that as it's not relevant. Next, we get down to section seven, where we talk about gains, losses, and net chargeable gains. You can ignore the reference to S604A relief as this is to do with property. And for our chargeable gains in the year, again, we'll refer to our previous example. Our chargeable gain in the year 2020 was of course the 4,000 euro of profit we made from Bitcoin. So in total, we had 5,000 euro, but 1,000 euro of that was our principal and 4,000 euro was the profit. So that is our chargeable gain for 2020. So we can go ahead and add that in just here. Here in section eight, we add the losses in the year before the relief. Again, ignore the relief. So it's simply just add the losses in the year in question. For this scenario, we have a 500 euro loss in the sale of our Apple shares. So we'll add that in here. For section nine and section 10, you can skip those. You don't need to worry about those either. For section 11, we have our chargeable gains net of allowable current year losses. So to refer back to our example, for us, that would mean our gain on Bitcoin minus our loss on our Apple shares. So this would be 4,000 euro minus 500 euro gives us a total of 3,500 euro. And we'll add that in here. For section 12 and 13, we can ignore. And then for section 14, we have the amount of unused losses from prior years available for offset against chargeable gains. So this is simply where we take the 500 euro in our previous year's investment from Silly Company Limited, and we can offset that against our gains in this year's investments. So you simply just add 500 euro into this box here. Section 15, as you can see, is referring to our personal tax exemption. If you are using the full amount of the tax exemption in your particular example, you'll simply take your 1,270 euro and plug it in here. However, if you don't need the full exemption or your gain is less than 1,270 euro, just put in whatever total is applicable to you. Remember, you must deduct your current and previous year losses before you use your exemption. So as mentioned earlier, although you can bring your losses forward indefinitely, once you realize a gain from a sale, for example, of your shares or your crypto, you need to use those losses first before deducting anything else. In section 16, we're calculating our net chargeable gain. So again, to go back to our example, this would simply be 4,000 euro minus 500 euro from the previous year, minus 500 euro from the current year, minus our 1,270 euro tax exemption, which gives us a total of 1,730 euro as a net chargeable gain. We'll add that figure in here. Section 17, you can ignore. And for section 18, this would be similar to our example where we've carried forward our 500 euro from 2019. If we had another loss, for example, in 2020, we would add that figure in here and carry it forward to future years. For section 19 and 20, this will depend on when you sold your shares. So as mentioned earlier, if you sold between the period of 1st of January to the 30th of November, you will fill in the details here. And if you sold in between the month of December, either from the 1st or to the 31st, you will add that number in here. If you did both, you'll just simply add the applicable number for each section. 
In our example, we only made sales in the period of between the 1st of January and the 30th of November. We would add 1,730 euro here. For section 21, double taxation relief, you can likely ignore this as a double taxation relief likely will only come into play when it comes to dividend income for an Irish investor. But if this section happens to be applicable to you based on some tax advice, this is where you would fill it in. However, for most watching, it won't be applicable so you can skip on by. That includes the bank detail section also. You will not need to add this unless you're looking for a refund from this double taxation relief. Section 22 is for an expression of doubt. This is simply where you'll fill in any notes or concerns about the filing that you're making or any confusion. Um, and essentially you're just flagging with revenue that you're not sure on something. So if that is the case, this is where you'd add it in. And then the last section of the return, as mentioned at the start of the video, is a self-assessment section. As we said, if you file your return before the 31st of August 2021, you'll notice that you do not have to do this section. But let's say, for example, that you didn't do it before this date, you would simply come down to section 23 and fill in the applicable details. Essentially, it's a summary of most of the info that we've already added. In section A, we'll add our net chargeable gain of 1,730 euro. In section B, we'll add the 570 euro 0 0.90 figure, which is simply 33% of our net chargeable gain, which is our capital gains tax. In section C, it's simply the same again. And a quick note, uh, something that we should have mentioned earlier, but as you can see on the form, 0, 0.00 is already added to your form. So essentially you're just rounding up to the nearest whole number. So again, just make sure to do this when filling in the form. For section D, if you are filing the return late and you have a surcharge to pay, this is where you would add in the figure that you owe. The details of the surcharges are on these two lines here, so simply calculate what you owe, if applicable, and add it into the box up here. Section E is related to local property tax, so you can ignore. And then for section F, you're simply adding the amount of tax that you paid already. So of course, remember that this is in 2021, so we are filing this CG1 form for the previous year, and that means that we've already actually paid this tax, or at least we should have already paid it. So in our example, the total tax that we owed was 570 euro and 90 cent. So I'll round this up to 571 euro and add that in here. And then section G, you can also ignore. And that takes us to the end of the form. Simply sign it, date it, and you're good to go. And then a quick note on paying your capital gains tax. All you need to do is log into my account on revenue.ie, scroll down as far as make a payment, hit make a payment, select tax, capital gains tax, add the payment, select the year that you're paying for. So again, we're filing in 2021, but we're actually paying for the tax that we made in 2020. So 2020, add in the amount that we owe, and for us, this would be 571 euro as we calculated in our example. You'll click add payment and follow through with the steps. And again, just to reiterate, like with most stuff on revenue, not everyone has the same situation. So if something isn't available to you or it doesn't seem visible or is a different screen to what we have, the best scenario is simply to message revenue through my inquiries and ask them to either activate the button or to figure out what the problem is. And you can just do that up here in the right hand corner. If this video helps you file your CG1 return, the best way to thank us is drop a like on the video. Of course, if you have any questions about anything that we've covered, do let us know in the comments below and we'll do our best to help you out. As we mentioned, we'll also be doing videos on Form 12 and Form 11 over the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. And of course, subscribe if you want to get notified for when we release them. Cheers for watching, we'll see you in the next one.